Good to wach. Good to vach, Doc. How are you? Good, good. I, 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 look, I, I'm fine. The congressman is with us uh, on the line. Uh, first of all, Yankee, uh, you know, it's a difficult question to ask because you're, you're not back here in our community. Uh, you know, the days go by, the weeks go by, the months go by. How, how are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis as this saga continues, Yankee? Well, first, let me allow me to say hello to Congressman Chris Smith. I, I haven't spoken to him since he was here the last time, the second time, and Hanukkah. So, hello, hello, Congressman. How are you doing? How are you? Nice to talk to you, Jacob. Uh, thank you very much, Congressman, for doing this. I know, I know it's a Saturday night, 11 o'clock. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Thank you very much. Well, I get a trick, Jacob. Every day we do something, and sometimes much more than others, try to make this, this terrible injustice done to you. Uh, be repaired to the greatest extent possible, and first and foremost, you need to go home. Jacob, um, you I know... I raised it with, with the Secretary of State Curry the other day uh, and followed up after the hearing and gave him a copy of the hearing record, the second one especially, yellow highlighted for him, and asked him uh, to call Abel Morales, because I think, you know, we need the highest level of people in our government uh, weighing in on your behalf. Yankee, yeah, let me yeah, ask... Yaki, let me ask you, with all the people that have been arrested, uh, uh, individuals appearing in court almost apologizing to you for yeah. what they've put you through, I mean, with everything going on, you would think that, okay, let's send this guy home as fast as possible. This guy hasn't – all the claims we made that you were totally innocent, you didn't do anything wrong. I mean, it's become so obvious. Why do you think – like I said, thank God you're not in a prison, but you are not free. What, what do you think is going on from your perspective in terms of the government, uh, you know, just not letting you go home, period? That's, it's absolutely incredible. It's not almost apologizing. They actually apologized. I mean, it was a shame that my family was not in the courtroom. It was unbelievable. I mean, the congressman knows who Fernando Rivera is. The congressman, the first time when he came to Bolivia actually showed up at the hearing when Fernando Rivera was in the courtroom um, intimidating the judge and told him that if he's not going to um, recuse himself from the case, he's going to file charges against the judge. That same Fernando Rivera was in the courtroom crying like a little girl. I mean, it was amazing. It, it was a shame that my family wasn't here because my family was here in some of the hearings, and this Fernando Rivera showed up in every hearing and every time I had a, a postponement. He walked out and celebrating and laughing and, and high-fiving his partners. And he had the nerve to come into the courtroom and apologize to me in front of the judge. And it, it, was, it was just unbelievable. But then, but it was a joke. It was a six day, or close to seven days, actually. It was a seven-day hearing. Could you imagine a hearing? Wow. Seven days apologizing to me uh, in front of the judge. But then, of course, the following day, he goes to the media and tells the media that he was just following orders, right? And he was hoping that the judge would go easy on him. And what was really amazing is that this Fernando Rivera was talking to the judge for hours about how his human rights is being violated. I mean, could you imagine Congressman talking about human rights violation, about his human rights being violated, about him fearing for his life in prison, and crying to the judge, not to dismiss the charges, of course, but just to let him go so he could be with his family to let him go out on bail. It, it, was, it was an incredible scene. I mean, and then prior to this hearing, uh, there was all of the 14 people who were in jail. And, and by the way, he wasn't the only one who was apologizing. <clears throat> he was the one that was apologizing on camera, but the original uh, prosecutor who put me in jail came over to me apologizing, trying to shake my hands, and I told him, how dare you try to shake my hands? My lawyers had to hold me down. Uh, the other prosecutors apologizing, the district attorney from Santa Cruz coming over to apologizing, all in front of the judge, but the media wasn't there. Um, all of the 14 people were in jail, well, all of the 14 people who were in jail were in the courtroom last week because there was a hearing about having access to their computers. So it was for the first time that I actually got to meet all of the people who are in jail. And most of them came over to apologize. I mean, even the judge who gave me my freedom and then reversed his decision, I met him in the hallway, came over to me and apologized. I mean, it was just, it was just unbelievable. 
and, and nothing, Dov, and Congressman, absolutely nothing has changed since, I mean, it's, we're going now almost on the second anniversary in another six weeks. I'm going almost on 700 days. There's 14 people in jail, five people in house arrest. Every single prosecutor and every judge who was involved in my case is either in jail or in house arrest. Ten people are wanted. I mean, most of them and most of the ten people, supposedly the government is still looking for them, but we have evidence that the government helped them escape. And I'm not still out. I mean, it's wow. absolutely incredible. Yankee, not only that, a step further, you used to have security at the location that you're at, and I understand that your security has been removed. Is that, yeah, that correct? Is, and that is correct, and it's very interesting uh, because 24 hours after Fernando Rivera apologized in the courtroom, and he basically told the judge that he was following orders from his superiors, and if you got the time, I could get into it for a couple of minutes, who his superior is. And 24 hours later, my security totally disappeared. The police officers didn't even come and say goodbye to me. And I'm basically right now with absolutely zero security. I mean, uh, and, and the embassy is aware of it. The U.S. State Department is aware of it. I have absolutely nobody watching over me. And, and my, 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 my lawyer actually received a threat after the judge gave his decision, received a threat. And I'm basically without any security whatsoever. Dear. You know, you're telling us all these people have been arrested. Fourteen people arrested relating to your case. Uh, other people under house arrest. And you're still being held. Now, Im Im imagine this. I mean, Im actually, the judge de affair uh, from La Paz came to visit me this past Wednesday. And I got to spend a couple of hours with him. And that's actually why I decided that I might as well do the show and talk to your listeners. And I would like to get into the law that Congressman Chris Smith is trying to pass and try, to explain, to you, listen, and try to explain why it's so important. You know, he basically told me, Jacob, um, I'm giving up. He, he's had 17 meetings since I've been released on bail. And he basically told me, Jacob, they are afraid to let you go. And if you understand the politics, what's going on in this country, you'll understand why. They're absolutely afraid uh, that, you know, once they let me go, they have to answer they're going to have to answer to the opposition, I mean, to the people in the country. I mean, you cannot possibly fathom the amount of support that I'm getting from, this, from the people of Bolivia. I mean, I got boxes of letters that I received from thousands of wow. people all over Bolivia. And they're going to have to answer why did it happen. And nobody does, nobody. I mean, all of those people had hearings. They had went to the appellate court. And they're going back and forth in court, just what I did. And nobody is talking about the money of the rice. I mean, millions and millions of dollars worth of rice disappeared, and nobody is talking about the rice. Wow. Uh, and Congress that is the reason why they are afraid to let me go. Congressman, um, uh, Congress and, and if I may, if yes. I may add, Dov, I don't know if you have a couple of minutes. Absolutely, why, please. And I, this is very important, and this might surprise you and your listeners. For so a number of boss, I mean, he, he's blaming it now on his superiors, is a person by the name of uh, Sashi Laurenti. He used to be the Ministry of Government. When I was put in jail, he was the Ministry of Government of Bolivia. There was a massive scandal eight months after I was put in jail about another issue, and I'm not going to get into it. It's very complicated, and it's a long story, but the government had no choice and forced him to resign. A month after he resigned, Dov, he became the ambassador from Bolivia to the United Nations, and that person right now lives in New York City. Oh, wow. So, so listen to this stuff. So I'm talking to my lawyer this week and say, if Fernando Rivera is saying that he followed orders from, Fernand, from Sasha Laurenti, who lives in New York City, I would like to put a lawsuit in, in a federal court and sue this guy. And my lawyers are telling me that since he's an official representative from a foreign country to the United Nations, even though he lives in New York, I can't even sue this guy. And right now it's Saturday well, night, eleven thirty, and this guy, this guy probably right now is dancing the night away somewhere in New York City. Yankee, let me while, tell you. While I'm wasting away here in Bolivia, and let, me, and let me also mention a couple of a couple of more issues why I think this this law is, is why it's very important for this bill to pass because this is not only about me and it's not only about Bolivia. Um, when the judge de affair came to visit me here on Wednesday, I found out that a very, I can, I, and a very high government official of Bolivia from the Ministry of Government, and I can't mention his name, the congressman knows 
who I'm talking about, just applied for a visa for him and his family mm. to go to Disneyland for 10 days. Oh, wow. I mean, imagine, imagine I am here stuck in, this, in, in, in Bolivia, and everybody knows that I'm an innocent man, and he's looking to go with his family to Disneyland, and this bill would stop them from doing that. Uh, they could not just pick up American business people and throw them in jail and take away all of their assets, and they go and party in the United States. One of, one of the prosecutors in my case, two weeks after my rice was sold, went to Disneyland for seven days with his family. Right. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. I'm very lucky that my, my daughter lives in New Jersey. You know, <laughs> if, she would have asked me, if she would have asked me, I would have told her to live in Brooklyn. Thank God she didn't ask me, and she, lived in, uh, she lives in Jersey, and that's how Congressman Chris Smith became involved. Uh, because my daughter is a constituent, a constituent of uh, of, uh, co of the congressman, and I can't. You know, and I actually got an email from Aaron Cutler, who asked me to get involved, and and he put me in touch with Kaya. You're right, right. and and then of course it's Mary Muir, you're wonderful. Yeah, you know, I'm going to uh, tell you. You, I'm know, tell I you, also think, you know, the idea of people going to uh, Disney World, they also come to not just Florida, but other places in the United States to do business and make money, uh, and they also send their families up here. Uh, to get, you know, the best possible education at finest universities on money, you know, especially in the case of the Jacobs that have been ill-gotten gains, so to speak, of money that they have fleeced. Uh, so that's why it also will require our embassies to compile lists of people who are, are abusing Americans and, and to have those lists available. I mean, that could in and of itself begin to have a chilling effect. Uh, if you're on the list, you're not coming here. And then we can do what we did with the Belarus Democracy Act, and that is to get other right-thinking democracies to say, hey, we'll join the Americans with their list. The European Union now has a list on denying travel for uh, Lukashenko and his cronies in Minsk uh, that looks almost identical to our own. So it, it has this, this effect of, of um, you know, saying, okay, <laughs> we're not kidding. You know, we, we, may, we can't prosecute you. You're not here. But we're not going to allow you to travel um, and, and come into the United States. And again, it applies to their families because, just as Jacob said, you know, they go to Disney World. But they also, especially, send their kids to higher education here. Uh, you know, I would like to mention one thing, though. I, I mentioned that the congressman when he was here the second time, but it wasn't confirmed. But now we have this confirmed information. You know, Bolivia is the poorest country in South America after Haiti. Wow, and uh, and they I guess the poorest country, and they have nothing. They can't even. They don't even have enough ice to give away in the winter time, right? I mean, let alone rice. Wow. So while I was in jail, while I was in jail, though, there was a major announcement in the government that they donated to Cuba 475 tons of rice, and that 475 tons of rice doesn't sound like a lot of rice when you steal 22,000 ton. Uh, but 475 tons of rice is close to a million pounds of rice. It was my rice dump. Wow. And we have this information confirmed. They didn't even bother to repackage the bags. I mean, I hope that Ellen Gross got to eat some of this rice. I mean, imagine Bolivia donating close to a million pounds of rice to Cuba, and that this was my rice. And they don't even have enough money to pay for their police officers. Uh, just, just from the rice that they stole from me to send to Cuba, they would have had enough money to pay for 250 police officers for one year. Wow. Could you imagine? Unbelievable. Yankee. Yeah, no, well, what you, I know that. Thank you, Congressman. You know, I know you're doing his well. office that it was very difficult for him to show up tonight, and I can't thank him enough. I've been in touch with his secretary at least twice a week. Uh, unbelievable. I, I can't thank him enough for showing up tonight, and I know it was very difficult for him to, to oh, make it. Uh, uh, don't worry about me. We do work this constantly. I want you to know that, Jacob. It's, it's the question of having wisdom. You know, Solomon asking for wisdom, you know, is one of my favorite, favorite um, you know, books of Scripture. Uh, you know, the first thing he asked for was for wisdom. We ask for wisdom constantly in prayer. What do we do? What is our next step? Because one of my chief concerns is I don't want to do any harm. Even the reintroduction of Jacob's Law, um, the thought was we delayed a bit, believing that there was at least some serious consideration being given to you um, to release you. I mean, I did meet with the Attorney General. We had an excellent conversation. He struck me as a man that was truly looking to protect 
your due process rights and to ensure that, you know, if you indeed are free, from his point of view, you would be free. Uh, how long, you know, justice delayed is justice denied. Absolutely. Let uh, me, so let our me, hope is I met, I met, I met the prosecutor not. in my case last week, my prosecutor, and, uh, and I went over to him and I told him, for how long are you going to keep me hostage in your country? You have stolen everything from me. It's time for you to let me go home to my country. And the prosecutor looked at me and he told me, I'm following orders. You wow. know that. And he, and he apologized to me. Uh, this Yaki, is a prosecutor. Yeah. yeah. Yaki, uh, Congressman, I have uh, a surprise for both of you. I have here with me uh, Miriam Ustreicher oh. sitting with me. And, oh, uh, okay. Okay, so that's a surprise. Uh, Miriam? Hi. Say hello to your husband. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Congressman Smith. I, Hi, Miriam. How are you? Nice to talk to you. I, I just need to tell you something. I have to tell you how awed I am by you and your staff. Oh. The, you approach every single case with such a passion. It's incredible. It seems to me that this is not a job for you, but it's a calling. Your heart is a ministry. I see my job as a ministry. Your, your heart's <laughs> in it. Your heart's in it. I felt it every step of the way from the first time that I spoke to you. I want to thank you for your incredible service to our country and for all of us that passed through your door. Thank you so much. Sure, thank you. And I don't mention earlier, you know, you have been such a tenacious and loving wife. I mean, your testimonies, everything you've done has been done with such class and, and with such fervor. And, Believe me, it has had an impact. Huge impact. Yankee, 